Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Let's take a look at variable width strokes. If you've used Illustrator before, you might have come across variable width strokes. They do kind of what it says on the tin. If I grab my line tool and draw a stroke across my screen, I can go up to my stroke options and push the thickness up so you can see it a little bit better. And if I go a little bit further down underneath my style menu, I've got this width option. And if I click on that, I can choose from various different preset width profiles. So this is just the same as you would see in Illustrator. And I can choose one of those from the menu. I'm going to choose width profile one. And you'd see what it's done is created this really nice expressive line, which tapers at both ends. So this is really useful if you're wanting to create more expressive graphics for your character animation, or if you're drawing in Flash, or if you're just wanting to do something that looks a little bit different. If I'd imported a variable width stroke from Illustrator, it would convert it to a fill, which would mean that I couldn't edit it further if I wanted. But because we've created this in Flash, I can use my selection tool to bend it about, and it will keep that variable width and it will recalculate it. So I think this would be really good for an eyebrow, for example, because it tapers at the end and it looks really nice. If I hold down Alt, I can add extra points along my shape, so perhaps I want it to lie a bit flatter at the end, I could do that. So that's how you can use variable width profiles. If I delete that line and draw another, it'll draw it using the last width profile I had selected. I'll put it back on uniform, and then I'll go over here to this new width tool in my toolbar. And this is a way of manually creating your own width profile. So if I click and drag, you can see that I can make a nice thick width profile, which tapers a little bit at the end. And I can add as many of these as I like. So let's add one more. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit there. And if I want, I can also shrink down existing points so I can make it taper off completely at the end like that. And this is still a stroke, so I can still edit it, I can make it round if I want. So this gives you a huge amount of control and there's lots and lots of possibilities for using these new variable widths. But not only can you draw them, you can also animate them as well. So I'm just going to delete this one and draw another going to put my width profile one on and I'm going to set another keyframe at frame 20 by pressing F6 and I'm going to change the width profile to this one width profile two. So this is what I've got in keyframe one and this is what I've got in keyframe two and in the middle I'm going to create a shape tween. And now what Flash does, this is a brand new feature, is it's going to tween between those two variable width profiles. It looks very, very cool. Let's take a look at an example I've created for this tutorial. What I've got here is a few different keyframes which have all the different variable width profiles on them. And as you can see, Flash animates smoothly between all of them. So there's lots of potential for using this type of animation for creating expressive character animation. Let's take a quick look at some of the other consequences of this new feature. I often animate using strokes like this. And I use it if I'm doing very simple stickmen animations for corporate clients. And something that I find very irritating in Flash is if I draw a vertical line like this, and I try and shape between it, so that it goes diagonally like this. You'd think that would be a pretty simple animation for Flash to do. But if I play it through, it kind of swaps the ends over. And if you watch my shape tweening tutorials, you'll know that you can fix this using something called shape hints. But sometimes they don't work quite as well as you would like. And it can be quite irritating. 
But something I've noticed from having a play around with Flash CC 2014 is if you do the same animation but apply a variable width profile, it actually fixes that problem and it'll animate in a much more logical way. So let's take a look at the same animation, but the second keyframe has a variable width on it, like so. So let's take a look. You can see that line animates in a way that we would expect it to. If I click on my variable width stroke and change the width back to uniform, you'll see it unfixes itself. And you might be saying to me, I don't want a tapered stroke in my animation. So what use is this to me? Well, if we use the brand new width tool, we can use this to keep the look of the line exactly the same, but fix the problem. So what I'm going to do is go over to my line and I'm going to use the width tool to create another width point. But I'm going to make it exactly the same size as the stroke as if it were uniform. And once we've done that, you can see that that fixes the problem, but it keeps it looking exactly the same. We get a much better animation and you should find this type of shape tweening a lot easier now that that feature has been brought in. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.